Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how to make sure that your highlighter on your face does not look stripy and that it looks natural. I see this a lot from Instagram trends and YouTube videos where the lighting is just super perfect. People get in the habit of doing highlighter in a way that makes it look super, super unnatural and just like a metallic line on the top of their cheekbones. So today I've gathered a couple tips for making sure that that does not happen to you so that when you step out into the world and people are seeing you in person in natural light that you look good. <laughs> So if you're interested in seeing some of these tips, go ahead and keep watching the video. We're going to get into it right now. Feel free to thumbs up the video if this is the kind of content that you like to see. And let's get started. Okay, so right now I have nothing on my skin except for my skincare. And this is sort of where you really need to start. So my first tip would be using moisturizing products, whether that be an actual moisturizer, a facial oil, or a primer that's more hydrating and dewy to give your skin already an all-over highlighted look. So highlighter's main purpose is to give our skin a natural glow and to make it look like it is dewy and fresh and natural. So if you start off your makeup by using a skincare ingredient, whether it be a moisturizer or facial oil or a primer that makes your skin have an already hydrated and kind of more dewy look. That way when we get to the highlighting step, our skin already looks like it's naturally glowy and we're not trying to just overcompensate by adding highlighter. So my skin isn't too crazy dewy, but you will notice a little bit of a natural glow already just from my skincare products. So now it's time to go into our foundation and kind of the same rule applies with foundation as well i would definitely recommend going in with something not necessarily dewy but definitely with a more natural finish than matte if you go in with a total matte canvas and then you just throw on some metallic highlighter right here there's no way that's going to look natural right so if your face already looks a little bit dewy and a little bit glowy and natural and healthy then you go in with highlighter it's not going to look out of place it's going to look like more believable i guess so for me i'm going to go in with the physicians formula the healthy foundation today And this definitely has a natural finish. I wouldn't say it's insanely dewy, but it's definitely natural. And so that's what we're going for today. I just like to use a big fluffy brush to sort of blend all that out. If you really only have matte foundations, feel free to mix in a little bit of your either a moisturizer or a facial oil or a little bit of a hydrating primer to give it more of a natural look. So our base is looking good. You can see that it still has sort of a fresh, natural looking quality to it. When I turn my head, you'll see sort of a natural highlight already on my cheekbones. So that way, when we add the highlighter, it's going to look like it belongs and that it really is just our skin and not a makeup product. Next is concealer, and I would say the same rule applies, especially if you bring your concealer down onto this cheekbone area. Keep it a little bit more natural than something super matte. So something like the e.l.f. Camo Concealer that I've been using a lot, or the Tarte Shape Tape, those are a little bit more matte formulas. And for me personally, I think that using that and applying the highlighter on top, again, just gives off a less believable highlighted effect. So I'm going to use the Maybelline Age Rewind. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer would be great as well. Just anything that is going to keep that radiance going throughout your skin. This isn't a highlighting trick, but for my next step, I'm just going to use a stippling brush to pick up any extra product that's on the skin. Oh. I've been really liking to do this lately so that I don't end up with too much cakey product on the skin. That way it wears better and doesn't crease as much throughout the day. As you can see here, we've still got a lot of glow, so we're good to go. That rhymed, I'm so dumb. 
So my next step would typically be to set my concealer with a translucent powder. That usually mattifies the concealer a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just set right under my eyes where my eyes crease a little bit anyways and I'm going to leave the rest of my concealer alone so that we don't lose that kind of dewy property. I'll go ahead and set my eyelids as well just since we're here. Okay this is where the order of your application is really going to make a big difference. I would suggest instead of starting with bronzer like most people do and applying your blush and then highlight on top, I would suggest applying the highlighter first so that it looks like it's coming from your skin. And that way if you do get a little too much or it turns out to be a little bit stripey, you've got products to go on top to kind of blend over it. Does that make sense? So now is when we go in with our actual highlighter. The products you pick to use and the tools that you use as well will end up making a really big difference. A lot of products that people recommend on YouTube are products that are extremely, extremely blinding and metallic and bright. And a lot of times those look great under the studio lights because they're being softened and blurred and just perfected basically. But when you go out into natural sunlight, a lot of times when I've tried to wear those kinds of highlighters that people recommend on YouTube, they start to look really, really over the top and stripey, especially for everyday use. So I would definitely recommend toning it back a little bit and not using something super, super blinding. A great one is this Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This gives you more of a soft sheen. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders are really great for this as well. And if I think of any more, I will link them down below. My favorite for my skin tone is this e.l.f. Um, I think it's called Metallic Flare Highlighter, which I don't feel like it's metallic at all, but whatever. This is perfect for me because it's light enough I can wear it and it doesn't leave my skin with a sort of like stripey look. And it's still a super natural glow. It's not going to look metallic or anything, even though it's called metallic flare. I don't understand what that's about. Another way you can highlight is using a cream highlighter or a liquid highlighter. And I feel like these can look really, really good if you use them in the right way. So I'll show you how I use those. But one that I really like is Lunch Money from ColourPop. This one right here, more of a cream, so I'll show you applying this one in just a second. Aside from just staying away from really metallic and bright beaming highlighters, is also finding one that's the right shade for you. For my fair skin tone, if I use something that's just a little bit too dark and I turn my head at all, you will be able to tell. So for example, let me show you this Pixie by Petra highlighter little duo is insanely stunning it's super super blinding so you got to be kind of careful with this but this shade right here looks fair oh no it fell out darn it oh well you can still see it okay so it sort of fell out a little bit but if you hold this up to the light it looks really really fair but when you turn it away it's extremely golden and a little bit deep so let me show you on my hand so it's super bright, right? But then if you turn your hand, it looks really dark. So you can see it right there as well, darkness. So I see people make that mistake a lot of the times as well. They'll put a highlighter on that looks really beaming and bright and the right kind of shade for their skin tone. However, once you turn your head at all, it almost gives off a gray or brown cast on your skin. So that's something you have to be very careful of is that you get a highlighter that's the right shade and the right undertones that it looks like it could be your skin and it's not gonna have some weird shift to it that looks too dark for you. Okay, so these are the two that I'm going to use today. I'm going to use the Lunch Money highlighter from ColourPop and then the e.l.f. white gold metallic flare highlighter, whatever this is called. And I'm going to show you how you can use both. So I will be layering them today, but you don't have to layer them. You could do one or the other for your technique. With a cream highlighter, I love to go in my, with my fingertips, especially with these ones from ColourPop. It just seems to work the best. What I like to do is really find the highest part of my cheekbone. And when I say the highest part of my cheekbone, I don't mean highest from the floor to the ceiling. I mean the highest is in the part that sticks, excuse me, as in the part that sticks out furthest from your face. So for some people, it might be down a little lower than you think. So for me, I kind of start to apply it about here because this is where 
I find that my cheekbone protrudes the most, if that makes sense. If you apply it up too high, it starts to look like it's just in your under eye area, and there's really uh, no need for that at all. Yeah. With this one, I like to take in two of my fingertips, and I sort of just swirl around like this. And then with this one, I definitely start to sort of just gently tap. And you want to follow your cheekbone line, but you also do want to make sure you're blurring it out. So I sort of will tap in like circular motions. And I keep it just right on that high cheekbone area. And then if you ever feel like you have it in the wrong place or you want to really blur it out more, take a fingertip with nothing on it. And just slightly go over the edges. And for me, I think it looks nice to swirl my highlighter up this way and around up into my brow. So this is why I do my face makeup first a lot of the times, is because I like to make sure that my highlighter isn't just in random spots, but that it's connected and it looks like it's coming from my skin. And I feel like if my brows aren't filled in yet, I can really run my highlighter through my brows and make it look even more natural. So I'll actually hit this high point on my forehead and sort of go through my brows until it connects over here on my temple and I am rubbing a little bit but you want to be careful you don't pick up any product from underneath um, I'm just being really really light about it if there's ever any areas that you have texture you don't want to draw attention to I would just avoid highlighter in those spots so if you just want to stop it right here at the temples that's totally fine um, but this just I feel like gives your skin the most natural look so you can see everything is connected hopefully you can see I don't actually know if you can but everything looks connected and it looks very very natural so I'll just do the same thing on the other side here and then you can do the same things just down the center of your face so I'll just take one fingertip and sort of apply a little line like that and then I'll take a clean fingertip and gently brush over and then same thing, I'll put some here on my cupid's bow. And then a little bit on my chin as well. And then use a clean fingertip to just sort of blend over it. You can also blend over everything with a beauty blender or like a beauty sponge if you'd like. Just to kind of diffuse it even more. I just feel like with this cream formula it works really well just to use my fingertips as long as you've got a clean one you can blend out with. One to apply, one to blend, you know. So that's how everything is looking. You can see that when I'm in the right light, I look super, super glowy. But when I tilt my head other directions, you don't see any sort of stripes or any sort of discoloration on my skin at all. I love these so much. So like I said, you don't necessarily have to layer your cream products with a powder highlighter, but just for the sake of showing you the techniques, I'm going to go ahead and take in my rose gold, my what, my white got, my white gold highlighter from e.l.f. to layer on top. When it comes to powder highlighters, using the right tool is going to be huge, especially if you're working with a highlighter that is a little bit more metallic. So I'm gonna show you a couple of my highlighting tools and what I would like to use them most for. So this e.l.f. highlighting brush is wonderful. It comes to a little taper, but it's a little bit larger. So this kind of a brush works best for something that is a really subtle, soft glow. So something like this Essence Pure Nude Highlighter or the Ambient Lighting Powders from Hourglass work really good with this because then you can dust it all over the skin and it's going to give you just a really soft, candle lit glow. Oh, I think there's a candle lit powder from, I think Laura Mercier has it like a candle light, candle glow powder as well. I'll try to find the name of that and link it down below. But something like that where you can dust it all over and you just use a really big brush to diffuse it, but it's also tapered so you can still kind of pinpoint where you want the product to go. That's going to be perfect for something like this. Then you can get a little bit more of a dense highlighting brush. So this is the... ColourPop small fluff brush and then this is the setting wait what is this real techniques setting brush so these are going to be a little bit smaller in comparison to this 
and a little bit more dense as well. So something like this is going to be really good for kind of more pinpoint highlighting. This is dense enough that it's going to pack on a lot of products. So I wouldn't use something like this with a super metallic highlighter for all over your face. So these are gonna be better used with something that still is a true highlighting powder, but it's not something super metallic because they'll pick up a ton of product. So something a little bit more like my e.l.f. highlighter right here. A lot of cream products too you could use these kinds of things with, but they're a little bit more tricky, so you kind of have to be careful with something like this. Then we've got your classic fan brush right here. This is gonna be perfect for anything that is super, super blinding and you just want a light dusting of powder. So anything like the Wet n Wild highlighting powders, the Maybelline Master Chrome powders, are going to be best applied with something like this just because it will give you a nice diffused light dusting of powder and it still just really hugs that cheekbone so it targets where you want to hit the product most. Then we've got something like this which this is actually an eyeshadow brush this is a Morphe M200 and it is a really soft flexible uh, powder brush. I'll show you in comparison to these two. It's almost as long but it's a lot smaller. Ooh. But it's a lot smaller than these. So something like this is gonna be good for really pinpointing a high point of my cheekbone. So I will show you that. That's best used with a metallic highlighter once you already have product down, just to hit one little tiny spot. So I'll show you that technique too in just a second. So for my powder highlight, I'm going to use my e.l.f. highlighter and I'm gonna use the ColourPop Small Fluff Brush. I love this brush with this highlighter because it's small enough to target where I want to hit it but large enough to still really be able to blend it out. And since this brush in particular picks up so so much product, I feel like it's safe to use with a highlighter like this because you kind of can't overdo it with this highlighter. What I like to do is just sort of swirl in here, definitely tap off the extra. This one doesn't really have that much usually for me to tap off but definitely tap that off. And then very gently, you're gonna start swirling this around your cheekbone. Start at the highest point, just right here, wherever you want the most product. And then I definitely like to incorporate a swirling motion because it really buffs it into the skin and makes it look a lot more natural. So I'm gonna work that product just right where I want it here on my cheekbone. And then we'll get a little more and swirl it up into the brow. Again, swirling up through the tail of my brow and up in like, up through the arch and onto my forehead. That again is gonna make it look like so much more natural than just putting a stripe here and a like a little spot of it on your forehead. Again, I feel like I can't really overdo it with this one, so I add quite a bit. Once I get to my forehead, I'll kind of drag up a little bit, and then there is how that is looking. Hopefully you can kind of see it a little bit. We'll just go ahead and do the rest of my face the same way. Down the nose, make sure that you're very careful to just hit it down the center. Otherwise, you're gonna make your nose look a little bit wider than it actually is. So if I'm using a really blinding highlight as well, I won't take as big of a brush down the center. My nose, I'll take something a little bit smaller. And we'll just hit all these spots right here. And you can just see how wet and glimmery my cheeks look. Oh, I love it. Now let me show you how to pinpoint highlight with a really blinding highlight and get just an extra little pop on your cheeks. So I'm gonna take the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter. This is the Nikki Tutorials Edition, so it's very, very fair skin and perfect for just that nice little beaming moment there on your face. I'm gonna take this smaller um, Morphe brush. This is again, just an eyeshadow brush. Okay, and then instead of swirling in, because this is a really, um, softly press formula so you can see I've dug into it a couple times um, so be really careful instead of swirling so we don't get too much I'm just gonna gently tap in on the side and you can already see how much product that picked up so with this one definitely tap off the extra and then I'm just gonna hit the highest point of my cheekbone so I like a little bit more just right here and I'm just gonna keep that centralized right in the center of what we have already applied and then we'll take a little bit more and I'll hit just right at the arch of my brow. So I don't do this all the time because I think it can go overboard really quick. But if you're doing a little something extra, you can just really pinpoint highlight where you want the most attention to be brought on your skin. 
now we are really glowing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So we're getting all that extra glow you can see here on my forehead, the centers of my cheeks, around the sides of my nose. We're getting that extra glow because we use more of a natural foundation, glowy moisturizers. That way that everything just looks a little bit more natural and you're not just like, you know, stripey looking. If you ever feel like you went overboard, here's a couple tips on how to tone it down a little bit. You can definitely take a beauty sponge and just a damp beauty sponge especially and just gently press over everything to diffuse it. You can take your clean powder brush or a dual fiber brush to just gently buff over everything. Or if you really, really took it too far, you can even take your translucent powder and a powder brush and just swipe over it really gently as well and that will really, really tone it down and make it look even more natural because it will look like it's coming from underneath your makeup. For me, this may look like a lot, but I'm really feeling it, so we're just going to leave that be. I'm feeling really good and really glowy. Next up, we'll apply a blush, and I like something with a little bit of shine when I have this much highlighter on because, again, it's going to just tie everything in and make it look really good. So this is my Ulta Beauty Mineral Blush in Tiger Lily, and this is where it starts to look even more natural because it's coming from underneath our blush. And then bronzer, you can use whatever you like, or you could even just stop here and do no bronzer. But for me, I'm just going to go into the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and take that just underneath my blush. This is a matte formula at this point. Since the bronzer goes in a completely different area than the highlight, I feel like it's okay to use whatever you like for bronzer. Okay, now that all the powder products are done on my skin, I'm going to go ahead and set my face. I found that setting sprays or facial mists are really important in making sure that your highlighter sort of melts into your skin and looks really natural as well. So I'm going to take my Flower Beauty Seal the Deal setting mist. We'll spray the face. Mm, definitely overdoing it. And then I like to just sort of take my beauty sponge and just gently, gently press over everything just to make sure that it got everywhere that I wanted it to, that it's even on the skin and that it's not stuck in all my little peach fuzz. Once everything is set and the setting spray is mostly dry, a good thing to do if you really want to bump up the highlighter is go in with a little bit more. Now that the setting spray is down and it's on your skin and it's mostly dry, the product will stick to your skin so well. So if you really want to amp it up, which today I don't think I'm going to because I'm pretty freaking dewy, you could really go in right now and just sort of do it up even more. And that's about it for me on the highlighter tips. Hopefully you can really see that glow. Feel it through your screens at home. Mm. But it's still super natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my face because nothing else really relates to the skin and then we'll be right back to finish up. All right, my makeup is all done. I worked on a little bit of a wing today. I feel like it turned out pretty well. Like when my eyes are open, I feel like it still kind of like lifts up a little bit. Maybe not. Uh, I've got some work to do in the wing department. But then I tried out this new Maybelline lipstick. This is in 379 Fuchsia for me. This is beautiful and so fun for springtime. Just dewy skin, bare eyes, and a bright lip. I love that. So here's how everything looks all together, and I'm super pleased with these highlighting tips. I hope these help you out today. If you have any, any other questions about anything or any other products or tips or techniques that you want to share, go ahead and leave them in a the comment below so we can chat about all the fun makeup things. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!